All right, so now we are at the last leg of API Days Live India. And last but not the least, we have saved one of the best speakers along with one of the most interesting topic for the day. So we have now next up Sneha Sridharan, technical writer at Zoho Corporation. And she will be sharing an interesting session about the topic, the link between technical documentation and development engagement. I think this topic also becomes a good conclusion as part of this segment uh, with respect to the theme of connected products. Because we started with the digitalization of supply chain, moving towards the Indian versus global banking ecosystem, then getting to the private banking system, and then concluding with more respect to the technical documentation and developer engagement. So Sneha, very warm welcome to API Days Live India. It is a Thank privilege you. and honor to have you as part of our speaker lineup. And your slides and presentation are all set and streaming perfectly fine. And your audio is also good. Any questions related to the audience, we will take it at the end of your session. So the stage is yours. Welcome once again. Thank you. Thank you, Dheeraj. Uh, so, uh, good evening, one and all, and uh, thank you for joining this presentation today. Uh, I'm Sneha Sridharan, and I'm a technical writer. Uh, today, we'll be talking about the link between technical documentation and developer engagement. Throughout this presentation, I'll be talking uh, in the context of uh, REST API documentation and uh, a few concepts related to developer relations and how technical documentation team and the developer relations team can work together to improve developer engagement. Uh, so let's start with some numbers. Uh, in a recent survey that was conducted on developer documentation, uh, only 27.79% of technical writers have conveyed that they use uh, video tutorials and screencasts in their documentation. And 56.82% uh, of technical writers have said that they do not use them. And 13.65% uh, of technical writers have said that they are planning to add uh, many uh, different kinds of uh, documentation such as video tutorials and screencasts in their documentation. Uh, so yeah uh, so let's start let's start this talk with why one has to accommodate different forms of media content in their developer documentation and then we'll see what developer relations is and finally we'll conclude this talk by drawing parallels between developer documentation that is rest api documentation developer relations and how they can work together to improve developer engagement so starting with why we need to uh, accommodate multimedia content uh, or content such as video or audio or any form of content that is other than plain text in developer documentation. Now, uh, let's take a step back and uh, consider the number of developers that will be using your APIs. Uh, there are tens and thousands of public APIs that are available now, and many statistics prove that uh, the number of developers that use APIs are increasing day by day. So just imagine the wide range of pool, uh, wide, wide pool of developers that will be using your documentation. They can be developers with different learning styles. They can be developers with different uh, mental needs. Uh, today we are talking about uh, uh, neurodiverse workspace and and the number of developers that will be using your public APIs is, is really huge. So your documentation forms uh, the initial bridge between the developer and the API. It is through documentation that the developer will familiarize themselves with, the, with your API or SDK. So it is important to create documentation in such a way that it caters to the learning styles of developers. Few, few of them will, uh, will be able to grasp information if it's a text. For few of them, it's a video. For few of them, it's an audio. So um, it is important to make sure that you give uh, proper documentation uh, and easy to easy to digest content uh, to help developers understand your tools better. When they understand your tools better, they spend less time on documentation and um, it is easy for them to uh, use your uh, API or SDK and uh, add them to their project or application. And ultimately, it reduces the number of uh, support tickets. And it uh, it saves a lot of time and money for every company. Uh, but the practice of using uh, audio audiovisual content is very common when it comes to user docs. By user documentation, what I mean is the documentation that is used to help a particular user to navigate through a software application and achieve a particular goal. For example, if there is a documentation on how to order food on Swiggy and uh, 
uh, how to uh, how to successfully place an order uh, it is a it is a quite straightforward doc you you have the end user that is very clear uh, the the end user may or may not know how to use the software application they may or may not know how to navigate through a touch screen and the ultimate goal is to make that user uh, successfully place an order in a software application but when it comes to developer docs the the scenario is completely different uh, the, the end users here are already developers they they have a clear knowledge of what software is and they are developers that are, that are actually building applications and are looking for apis to integrate with their application so here the end user uh, uh, the end goal is not clear they can they can take your api and they can use it in any way they want and uh, uh, they can produce any result that they want so here because of these uh, shortcomings it is very difficult to accommodate audio visual content in developer docs so uh, let let's zoom in with the developer documentation and which con which has uh, which includes api documentation and sdk documentation and in api documentation the major con uh, major constituents will be uh, these it will have the purpose of what an api is and it will have the details of endpoints to access that api and uh, the attributes that the developer must give the sample input and input that the developer must give and the parameters that uh, they must pass to along with the request input along with sample code in different languages and success and error responses so here most of the information that is provide, provided here is text and the appetite to add audio visual content is very uh, less and very difficult when it comes to api documentation now let's see how you can do that so uh, the places where you can add uh, multimedia content that is video screencast or uh, by by audio visual content what i mean is engaging content that is you can even um, uh, use uh, other forms of uh, writing such as uh, uh, blogs with uh, different scenarios and different uh, use cases and different case studies to make your uh, developers understand the true potential of your api you can even have a, a Uh, an, an api dem demo in the api documentation for example say you have an api documentation on uh, on, on, uh, on say if it, if you have an api documentation for google pay you can have a video that says here is how you can integrate google pay for your e-commerce website in four simple steps so instead of going through the entire documentation and uh, trying to understand what that api exactly is they can go through just this 2 minute video and uh, understand whether that api is actually solving their use case or not so uh, apart from this you can have a video that explains the actual purpose of the api uh, along with uh, different use cases and scenarios and case studies and and other uh, among others so we saw how to accommodate audio visual content in a, uh, in api documentation now let's look at a team uh, which is a part of engineering team that actually does this that is developer relations the true the main goal of developer relations in uh, in an engineering team is to make sure that they teach their developers how to use their apis and sdks better and how, and help them achieve their goals does this sound, sound familiar to you yes uh, technical documentation team also shares the same goal of teaching the developers how to use your api or sdk in a recent survey that was conducted on uh, state of developer relations these are the main uh, main uh, uh, main uh, uh, responsibilities of developer relations team um, the major re responsibilities include uh, to uh, to drive awareness and adoption to uh, to make a developers uh, uh, aware of their api solution and the power of their api solution this they'll do by uh, participating in conferences and talks and uh, conducting workshops conducting uh, uh, conferences and so on and the other major chunk comes with uh, comes as educating and supporting developers this uh, the developer relations team uh, do not do by uh, traditional documentation but they do by different engaging uh, engaging ways such as Uh, uh finding out the communication channels in which their developers are most active it can be linkedin or it can be twitter uh, it can be uh, youtube for that matter and they 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 find channels in which they are most active and they answer and they give solutions and they engage developers in that particular platform and uh, apart from these two the other responsibilities include uh, to drive engagement to get feedback from the developers and make sure that uh, it reaches the product management and engineering teams and to drive sales and get code contributions 
So now, mm-hmm. now let's zoom in on one part of their uh, action, that is uh, one part of their responsibility, that is to educate and to support developers. As I said earlier, they do not do it through traditional methods such as uh, just the text documentation. They do it through different ways and uh, make sure that uh, the developers don't feel that they are learning something new. Uh, they, they make sure that they don't uh, they don't get bored with the documentation. And along with that, they also make sure that the uh, developers understand the true potential of your API and SDK and, may, and can use it in their application to uh, unleash its true prote- potential. Uh, so, yeah, uh, as a, uh, the technical writing team and the developer uh, advocate team have the same goal of teaching the developers how to use a particular API or an SDK or a tool. And uh, where, while technical writers do it through uh, text documentation, developer relations team do it through different methods. Uh, and what I'm trying to say is technical writers can... Uh, Technical writers can uh, take some of it from uh, take some of the uh, techniques or metrics used by developer relations team and use it in the uh, use it in the documentation and accommodate it as part of the official documentation and uh, make sure that the developer uh, developer documentation caters to the needs of every single developer that uh, that are actually trying to use their documentation. So the key takeaways from this talk will be uh, the nature of user documentation and API documentation and how uh, they uh, vary largely and how uh, why multimedia accommodating multimedia content is easier in user documentation and why it is difficult in when it comes to developer documentation and how uh, you can accommodate uh, different content here in developer documentation. And um, uh, we also saw what is developer relations team and what they actually do and the shared goal between uh, uh, documentation team and the developer relations team. So yeah, I'm open for questions. Thank you so much, Sneha, uh, for an amazing session. And in fact, uh, I think uh, the session went really well considering uh, the, the overall uh, topics that were aligned during this session. And I think uh, as part of this session, if you would like to also explain any specific section in which you would like to elaborate a bit more, you can do that as well, because we do have uh, a lot of time uh, as part of the event, which we can include as part of your session as well. So is there any specific topic you would like to revisit and explain a bit more? You are more than welcome to do so as well. Uh, no, I think I've pretty much covered everything that I wanted to say. Uh, so, right. Yeah. If you have any, if you have any questions or if you have any doubts in a particular part, I'll be happy to explain that again. Sure. Yeah. So, in fact, uh, some of the questions which are there is uh, in terms of uh, the key differences, because, like you mentioned, technical documentation is a broader term then a user documentation and uh, technical de- uh, documentation can be internal and external while the user documentation is always uh, created for an user and i think you also covered the process of creating user documentations uh, requires a minimum technical background compared with uh, the technical documentation so in terms of the uh, description which follows by the tech writers in user documentation. Uh, Would you like to list any specific areas, for example, software requirements, installation guide, and others that will be critical to identify and make sure are part of uh, the tech writer's domain? Uh, Just a second, my laptop is running out of power. Sure, yeah, no problem at all. I'm so sorry, Vidas. No yeah. problem at all. I think that's technology, right? Which keeps uh, uh, keeps us in our toes. <laughs> so that's yes. completely fine. Yeah. yeah. So just uh, asking uh, a bit more to elaborate, considering uh, you being an expert, and I think it will be valuable for our audience that when the tech writers describe uh, various aspects in user documentation, which are the key things that needs to be in consideration 
for example, software requirements, uh, installation guide, and uh, so and so forth. So, would you like to uh, add something onto it as well? Yes, sure. By technical writers, you mean the developer documentation specialist, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, as I said before, our end users will be uh, developers who are actually uh, building applications and uh, and who are looking out for APIs and SDKs. And it is assumed that they already have uh, the minimum knowledge of what a software is and how it works. Uh, but what what we actually aim to do is to introduce a. a and a, and a new technology to them. Uh, say you have to tell about basic things like uh, how security is handled when it comes to that API. Say uh, whether you are using auth tokens or OAuth protocols. And uh, and apart from that, you have to you, you have to introduce the kind of API that are using that you are uh, going to have. Uh, like uh, whether it's a REST API. If it's a REST API, what uh, what is actually REST API? And um, apart from that, the different APIs that you're providing and how they can use them. Uh, so mostly when it comes to API documentation, people uh, explain the purpose of the API and other different parts of the API, but they don't actually shed more light on how the developers can use that and uh, leverage that API and uh, make their application better. So uh, that is one thing that is uh, mainly missing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Sneha, for answering that. And in fact, that is also very essential uh, to consider while you are working as a tech writer. I do have a couple of uh, more questions coming from the audience. So Gautam Sarang has asked a question. What is your thoughts on having the documentation in a wiki format, especially since things are changing by the hours per se? So, Sorry. Uh, your thoughts? Hello? Yes, same. Sneha, we can hear you. Uh, so yeah, can you repeat a... the question? Because I think. Sure. Yeah, there so is a problem with my question. Question from Gautam Sarang is What is your thoughts on having the documentation in a wiki format, especially since things are changing by the hour per se? Uh, so when when we say wiki, it's generally a, a explanation of that API written by the engineer himself. Uh, so it uh, most of the time what happens is a wiki is very vague, and when a, it will be understood by an engineer who is in the same organization, but when you expose it to different engineers who are you who are in say uh, we create a wiki that is uh, related to. Uh, related to software as a service and say say an engineer is trying to use uh, an engineering fintech industry is trying to use that api uh, then um, uh, then uh, then it might not be very clear if you just provide vague information of what that api is uh, you need a, a documentation that is dedicated to that particular api that explains every single aspect of that api and also uh, uh, explains the uh, full potential of that API. So I would, uh, I, it would always be better to have a dedicated document rather than just a wiki. Right. Yeah. Thanks again, Sneha, for answering that. So the next yeah. question which I have is, which tool is good for creating all type of document, which is by Mahesh Vankade. So your thoughts uh, on it? Yeah, tools pretty much depend on on uh, your requirement actually uh, whether your um, whichever tool is com uh, comfortable for that company's uh, company company and uh, the their tech architecture they can use they can choose a tool that accommodates that and um, yeah there are many different tools that are available for uh, say if you take rest api into consideration we have uh, uh, postman we have swagger and uh, which all of it which actually uh, you need to load a, a specification into that uh, tool and it gives out the documentation for you and then documentation can ultimately be edited by a, a documentarian uh, yeah so the the tool depends on your convenience actually there are many many companies that have a tool that is built by the company itself um, so you can either choose that or a third party tool that that suits you the best. Right. Yeah. Thanks again, Sneha, for answering that. So last, uh, I think the concluding question, which is there is, uh, as you know, that there are various issues that might arise while writing uh, both the user documentation and the technical documentation. Issues like delays, troubleshooting, uh, retesting, rework, redesigning, 
uh, reinspection, uh, product recalls, equipment downtime or delays. So what is the role of data sheets in terms of mitigating these kind of uh, issues? So would you like to shed some light on that? Uh, I don't understand what you mean by data sheet. Can you uh, tell me more on that? Yeah, so what uh, exactly do sheets, you mean by data sheet? Is it a... Right, so data sheets effectively is used to tackle the uh, the issues like the retesting, rework, redesigning, reinspection uh, issues like that, and also help in reaching goal in a timely and effective manner. Uh, because like like you shared as part of the best practices in technical documentation, uh, I think technical do documentation is the umbrella term that encompasses all written documents and materials dealing with software development. So from your side, which is the most challenging aspect when writing the technical documentation, if I can rephrase this question to you. Uh, the most difficult aspect would be as a writer understanding the technology fully. Mostly what will happen is uh, we have to communicate with the engineers and uh, um, most of them will be busy and uh, extracting information and the right information that we need to convey to the user will be the most challenging aspect of documentation. Apart from that, uh, uh, making sure that the right information reaches the right user is another big uh, challenge. Uh, so you have to have a perfect uh, idea of who the end user is and what they're trying to achieve using your documentation. And uh, now, nowadays we use something called user persona. Persona is nothing but uh, who your like an idea of who your user will be. Like you, you give them a name and you, you give them where they come from and what the challenges they may face. And keeping them in mind, you'll draft the documentation. So yeah. Those two will be the major major uh, challenges you, that you face while talk, writing documentation. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sneha, for answering all these questions. And like I said initially, it is a pleasure to have you on board as a speaker for API Days Live India. Hoping that you had a wonderful time with the, uh, with the audience which we had, because they certainly had a lot of interaction and questions for you and for your sessions. And uh, I'm sure uh, hopefully we are able to see you next time as well as part of the next API Days event. So once again, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Deeraj. Thank you for having me. All right. So like I said, we are at the last leg of API Days Live India. Before the closing remarks, we still have a couple of minutes left. So feel free to browse around the partner village. There is uh, already a, a, another stage in which the, uh, the talk is getting concluded. We do have in the partner village various raffles, various prizes, various giveaways by our wonderful sponsors. So please take this time to see around and also engage and interact with all the professionals at the sponsors pool. And there is a treasure hunt which is going on, which has been uh, really uh, creating a buzz across the event. So hopefully you have participated in the treasure hunt. If you have not participated in the treasure hunt, please take this time and uh, participate in the treasure hunt because I think it is uh, fabulous with an exciting prize for the winner as well. So with that note, uh, this is Dheeraj Neyal, Global Community Ambassador at DevOps Institute, your host and MC for the connected apps and products uh, segment at API Days Live India. Hoping to see you all again in the next API Days event. With that note, thank you so much. Take care, stay safe, stay healthy. Bye-bye.